Okay. What's going on with Infosys? Politics. This is about politics. This is about this. This is very clearly an attempt for Infosys, uh, one of the largest consumers of H-1B visas, to get themselves on the right side of the story that's been going against them and been going against them for quite a long time. It's one of the reasons uh, that President Trump was able to become President Trump because he was able to really capture this notion of something gone awry with the American workforce and Infosys as a principal uh, uh, offender. There, a lot of the stories in the far right media really calling out Infosys in particular as a company that's hurting American jobs. It's no accident that this isn't just a plan of 10,000 hiring, but 10,000 people being hired in hubs, the first hub announced where? In, in Indiana. Yeah. So in Indiana, really focused on a place where President Trump won, where Vice President uh, Pence uh, hails from, and I think they really want to make a mark in that state for political reasons. Dig a little deeper here. I know you've been taking a look at the numbers and some of the other companies that yeah. are really affected by the H-1B visa policy changes. So the, the outsourcing firms are big consumers of the H-1B visas. Well, we have uh, bigger and better known companies like Apple and, and, and Intel and others talking about it. When we look at the numbers of who the biggest consumers are, they are very much these kinds of outsourcing firms. Uh, I think we've got a graphic that demonstrates how these, these firms are among the biggest consumers of H-1B visas. And what jobs are they doing? Uh, they're doing all kinds of jobs, but uh, the concern is that these jobs are actually quite replaceable. The concern is that these aren't very unique jobs, even though they're supposed to demonstrate that in order to get an H-1B visa. When you have the companies you can see from Tata, Infosys, and Cognizant, Cognizant, an Ohio-based company, um, that that uh, that these are the kinds of jobs, these, these sort of tech support jobs. It isn't inventing the next uh, mm -hmm. driverless car, or next uh, uh, amazing uh, optical semiconductor, but it's in fact a real tech support kind of jobs that are filling these uh, H-1B visas. And so the, I think this is very much should be seen as an announcement for announcement's sake. David, I know you've been thinking about this one a lot. What's your take here? Well, I think Corey's totally right. It's a political move, but it's justifiable because honestly, this program has been abused. This isn't one where, Don where Donald Trump really has it right. I think uh, these companies are bringing in people and paying them less than Americans would get for similar jobs. The American companies that bring in workers under this program pay them something like 50000 a year more on average than the Indian outsourcing firms that bring people in. So even if you're coming in from the outer, outer, other countries, you, and 70% of workers on this program are coming from India, even under those circumstances, you're going to make a lot more if you're working for an American company. I think the Indian companies have a serious perception problem they have to address, so it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that Infosys is doing this. Corey, how competitive is the H-1B visa program? Well, it's, it's enormously competitive. There's so many more applicants than there are spots available, but uh, uh, and to, to a massive degree. And it is a way for some of these people to actually get green cards and be in this country. Uh, we, have, we have friends who are some of those people who've followed that route in order to do that. We've got Bloomberg Intelligence Analysts mm -hmm. who've done that very same thing. But I think that uh, you know fundamentally, what we might expect is some changes in the H-1B program to try to uh, uh, fix these problems and, and fix the problems of workers getting paid less, coming here and sort of being stuck with these jobs, getting paid less than American workers. And, uh, an ability for companies to increase their margins and they hire such consultants, but uh, but not a way sort of uh, to a better life and for America to continue to lead in technology. David, this is something that Mark Zuckerberg has personally taken on, trying to get more quote unquote skilled workers into the United States. How does this affect the Facebook and, and the Googles of the world? Well, it doesn't directly affect them that much, but I think that what, what will affect them is if we can find a way to open up the doors to allow more people to come in to do a variety of jobs that are needed with fewer restrictions while still being able to protect American jobs. And that's a tough balancing act, but all the big tech companies absolutely feel they would benefit and the American economy would therefore benefit if they could bring in more people from outside the United States. And, and if this, this, this program was not so severely restrictive as Corey was just saying. Last word. Well, I mean, I, I, look, I, I, John Doerr has for years been saying, every time someone st graduates from Stanford, we should staple a green card to their diploma, that, that, that there are workers who can really benefit the economy. And there's, so this notion of this anti-immigrant notion about stealing jobs, you know, particularly in technology, is a really important issue here because a lot of people want to start businesses mm -hmm. and change technology, and they're not going to have the chance. All right.